from Hollywood, the Jack Benny program, with his special guest, the Smothers Brothers. That's not right. I said it wasn't the trees. I know you said it wasn't the trees, but then you said, oh, no, it isn't the breeze. Well, you said it wasn't the breeze. Well, at first, it wasn't the breeze. It was the trees. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, <laughs> if, if, it, if it's the trees, it can't, it can't be the breeze. And I, and I said, oh, no, it isn't the breeze. So that, so how, I'm awful right. <laughs> you, uh, you are right. But just forget, just forget everything I've told you. Just say, can it be the trees that fill the breeze? Please. Oh, okay. Can it be the... What? Trees. <laughs> can it be the trees that fill the breeze, please? <laughs> no, I That's stupid. How can it be the trees that fill the breeze? Okay. 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 a good enough idea and it didn't work. So if you'll leave now, I'll introduce you later. Huh? Don't you want to try it again? No, no, no. <laughs> Try it once, well, I'll introduce you and you'll do something later. Huh? I told you you didn't know. <laughs> of course, ladies and gentlemen, you know those are the Smothers Brothers. You know, the reason, the reason I had them out here at the opening is I thought for a change, it would be kind of nice to have someone else do my theme song instead of that orchestra of mine. See, it's not that I have anything against my musicians, but when the brass section blows through their instruments and those fumes fill the breeze, <laughs> believe me, it's a rare but not magic perfume. <laughs> like that at the opening of a show would upset me, but not anymore. I feel that uh, these things really aren't too important. You know, I found out that the only important thing in life is your health. Yes, sir, that's, that's the important thing. But fortunately, I don't get sick very often because I keep myself in real good condition, you know, physical condition. And the way I do that is by getting plenty of exercise. Every morning, I used to get up at 7 o'clock and turn on my TV set, see, and do all those exercises they show you on television. But after about eight weeks, I had to stop it. You see, I found out that those exercises were for women, and my whole shape was changing. <laughs> fact, I didn't notice it myself until one day I, um, well, I better save that for the Johnny Carson show. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, getting on with the show, I'd like to bring on my guests, two very fine entertainers, the Smothers Brothers. Aren't you a folk singer? Yes, but I but I said no because I didn't want to. Wait a minute, it. you're a folk singer. Ha, have you read the folk singer's guidebook? Yeah, but I didn't want to. And uh, what does the guidebook say? It says all folk singers are obligated to do what? You're you're obligated to take it. <laughs> without 
without hesitation, without thinking, yeah. like a reflex, Tommy. Take yeah. it, Tom. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, when right. I say take it, hop to it. <laughs> Boil that cabbage down. Take it, Tom. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Hundreds of years ago, the railroad started in America. Rugged men of yesteryear went out in the wilderness with vision in their eyes and big nine-pound hammers in their hands. Went out in the wilderness to build the great spider web of steel rails, the transcontinental railroad to span our country as these men went out in the wilderness and toiled and inched their way across the vast bosom of America. <laughs> Thought throw a little sex in the show. <laughs> This wasn't just a fun job. There was dangers in this job as they built the railroads up the mountains and down the mountains and in the, across uh, the deserts and all over raging rivers and they had to span crevices, deep crevices in the ground and in the, and in the bottom of the crevices there was pumas. <laughs> these just pumas with claws and foam coming out of these pumas' mouth and the, and the railroad men, they're going, Woo! Look at those pumas down there! Across the crowd, there's pumas in that crowd. There were no pumas in the crevices because we don't have pumas here. There are no pumas in America. Well, maybe some came over to visit. They don't visit. Now, if you want to keep your story truthful, you get rid of the pumas right now. I'm not going down that crevice. There was these vicious beasts in these deep crevices, and these 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 rare men said, "Well, look at those vicious beasts in the crevices. <laughs> they look like pumas." <laughs> but they weren't, they... and they were sore afraid. Yet the railroads were completed. Yes, the transcontinental railroads were completed, and a big, fe a big feast was transpired for these rugged railroad men. And the sole substance for this big feast. For these rare men, the sole substance was hot cakes boiled in cabbage juice. <laughs> Not so popular now. <laughs> they have to sing about something else. I put myself a bicycle, I learned to ride it well. Crashed into a telephone pole and broke it all in pieces. <laughs> down the turned that old cake brown. The only song I ever did sing was boil a cabbage down. You did, have you ever read the folk singer's manual? It says, when I'm, someone right, says to take right. it, you're supposed you're to right. take it. You're I right. said I'm, to take I'm it, and you didn't take it. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Really, I'm sorry. Well, don't get belligerent. No, you I'm didn't not. take it. I'm, I said I'm sorry. That's all I can say. I'm sorry. But that's okay, then. Don't, don't make any more mistakes. <laughs> Very, very good. Thank you. You know, you boys have been quite successful the last few years. Must make you very happy, huh? Well, it makes us happy, but it really makes our family very happy, especially our little old grandmother. Oh, your grandmother, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, we have a little, little, little old grandma, and she lives up in Barney Gulch, a little town in Northern California. And, and since we things have been going well, nobody ever hardly knew her, but now they refer to her as a smothers brother's mother's mother. <laughs> No. <laughs> yes, 
she has a mailbox this long. Oh, oh, oh. Well, fellas, tell me, tell me something about yourself. Where did you, where did you go to school? Well, we went to uh, high school down here in Redondo Beach, California, and then we both went to college. Oh, you went to college, both of you. What did you study? Well, I was studying a business administration, and Tommy uh, was studying medicine. <laughs> Looks like a puma to me. <laughs> Tommy, you were, you were studying medicine? Yeah, I was, I was going to be a brain surgeon. A brain surgeon? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't be a puma. There's no puma. <laughs> You studied to be a, a brain surgeon. Yeah, was, yeah, but I just de I decided against it. I mean, you know, I was 18 years old. My mother still was cutting my meat for me. <laughs> well, I, I can see where that might lessen your confidence. I was pretty, I was pretty good with a fork, but a knife, I was lousy. <laughs> well, tell me, how did you? <laughs> How did you kids happen to get into show business? You know, we were watching television, a program, and there was this guy that came out, and he just, he didn't do anything. He just kind of stood around, and he stared, he stared at the audience. Tommy, Tommy. He did, too. He just went out, and he stood out there, and he kind of stared at the audience. He didn't do anything. Well, the way I figured, if he could go out there and stand around and do nothing, I guess I figured we could maybe do that Tommy. something. <laughs> A lot younger on television. <laughs> he doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I do too. And that was years ago. Anyway, I'm glad I was responsible for you going into show business. Now I know you're going to do another number. So what's it going to be? How does he know we're going to do another no. number? <laughs> when he pays, he knows. <laughs> you know, well, he better pay us plenty, cause brain surgeons don't work cheap. <laughs> Uh, just a minute. We'd like to do a song of a young man who just lost his sweetheart. It's feeling very sorry for himself. It's entitled, I Never Will Marry. Some say that love is a gentle thing, but it only has cause. I was very young. I remember there was a little girl that lived down the street from me. And we always used to say that when we grew up, we'd be married. And it was sort of a childish thing and a puppy love. Yet as the years went by, this puppy love grew into something very dear and very precious to me. You know, they tell us that love is a gentle thing. But I think each person here who has truly loved and been loved has shed a tear and experienced heartache. And the girl I learned to love so very much broke my heart and left me for another man. Yet I love her still. And I swear by all the stars in the skies that as long as I live, I never will marry unless I can marry her. I'll mess around a little bit, though, you know. <laughs> Some
something about those boys that, that's very familiar. They remind me of a couple of fellas I met when I was in London in 1944. It was during the war, and I was over in Europe entertaining the servicemen. See? And while I was there, I also did a few shows at the London Palladium. Well, one night, the enemy planes came over and put on one of the most devastating air raids of the entire war. I'll never forget it. I had finished my show at the theater, and I was walking back to my hotel. See? When the sirens started to wail, and the bombs dropped, and the searchlights were crisscrossing the sky. By Jove, they gave us a bit of what for tonight. No, no, this one's even worse than the other one. Do you hear something? Cool, another duck. Sounds like we've got a real live bomber out here. Blimey, that's a big one. I ought to go and get the bomb diffusing squad. Oh. There's a bloke under here. I bet hurry. Hold on. What are you doing there? What am I doing? I try to catch this for a souvenir. <laughs> He's an edgy one, isn't he? American, you know. <laughs> hey, pull this off of me, now will you, pull. please? Hold it. Can you hear it ticking? The slightest little jolt will sell the whole thing off. You mean? Let me put it this way, Doctor. If you sneeze, you'll never hear the Gesundheit. <laughs> Can't you see I'm trapped under here? <laughs> For heaven's sakes, can't you see he's trapped under there? <laughs> Get started. Take this thing off. Tommy, go ahead and get started. Not until he closes his eyes. Why should I close my eyes? I don't like anybody looking over my shoulder while I'm working. <laughs> if I make a little mistake, you'll go blabbing it around to everybody. Look, if you make a mistake, I won't tell anybody, believe me. <laughs> Not even the guy who picks up my lips. <laughs> okay, in that case, you can watch. Well, thank you. Now, first, we've got to locate the exact area of the mechanism. First, we've got to locate the exact area of the mechanism. Uh, yeah, I heard of it. All right, Tommy, you get looking on that end. I'll look on this end. It's getting louder. It's getting louder. That sounds hollow. It's a lobby. Shh. It's talking to me. Tommy. Hey, the bomb's talking to me. It even knows my name. It said Tommy. I never knew a bomb before. I never bought one. Clearly, fellas, please. Ah, now, let's get this cover up. Look at this clock. What a beautiful mechanism. That's a that's that that's an XK41. That's a Swiss movement. No, no, the XK41 happens to be a German movement. It's a Swiss movement. It's a German movement. XK41's German. It's a Swiss movement. It is not. Who cares? <laughs> It's always the fellas who are just lying around there that keep rushing. Well, why wouldn't I rush you? I don't even think you fellas know what you're doing. Well, you too. I just defused the bomb just a little while ago, right over there. <laughs> must have been over there. Tommy, I thought you said you defused that bomb. I did what I always do. I 
detach the white wire from the blue wire. It's supposed to be the green wire from the blue wire. I, I thought it was the white no, wire. No, no. It's always been the green wire from the blue wire. But just a little mistake. I mean, I mean, everybody makes a mistake. You know, nobody's perfect. Gee, if everybody was perfect, if you were perfect, and if you were perfect, and I was perfect, what kind of world would this be? This would be some world, believe me. Look, if I want philosophy, I can listen to Bertrand Russell. <laughs> or Jack Parr. Now, get back to work, will you? Okay. Well, according to this clock, we've got about two minutes before the bomb goes off. So we better hurry. Yeah, I'll get behind this we cog wheel here. And I'll detach this wire right hey, there. Tommy, I just noticed something. Do you know who this is? No, who? That's Jack Benny. You mean the guy that's playing at the Palladium? Yeah, it's Jack Benny. Are you really? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm Jack Benny. Hey, nice to meet you. Don't get up. Go to the truck and get the guitar. Yes. Guitar? <laughs> we want to get into show business, Mr. Benny, and we'd sure like to do a number for you. But there's no time. You said yourself there's only two minutes left on the bow. Great. All right, let's do that special song we've been working on. Yeah. That, that, that's a... You, it, it, we've only got two minutes. That's all right. The song takes a minute. <laughs> kind of a funny number. Uh, if you feel like laughing, go right ahead. No. <laughs> Look at boys. Oh, what tempo? <laughs> Jimmy Crack Corn, I don't care. No. Jimmy Crack Corn, I don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn, I don't care. Wait a minute, that's not the way it goes. I don't care. <laughs> How'd you like that one? Fine, fine. <laughs> how, how about an encore? Never mind the encore. We've only got a few seconds left. We didn't get it. Let's do it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I told my producer once, I told him a thousand times. When we do a sketch, don't use a real bomb. <laughs> hey, Dickie, you know, yeah. I can just see it in tomorrow's headlines in the papers. Benny's bomb smothered brothers. <laughs> Father's brother. Thanks, boys. Thanks very much for being on the show. Yeah, this, you know, you know, this is one of the dirtiest shows I've ever been on. <laughs> Well, that's the show. Good night, folks, and I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>